Hello, hi everybody. Welcome to this Friday webinar. I hope you're all doing well today, wherever you are in the world or the UK or Europe. Well, the UK and Europe are part of the world, I guess. But wherever you are, um, hello. Uh, my name is Carl. I hope you're all doing well this day. Um, and I'm here to talk about TEFL, basically. This is a live question and answer video. We have a theme today, which is about making the move from classroom to online teaching. That's something that a few people have been messaging us asking about. So I'm going to be discussing that. But we're not only going to talk about that. If you have any questions at all about the world of TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language, please put them in the chat and I will try my best to answer them. Or if not, Alan, who is also monitoring the chat, will definitely get involved and answer them if we can. So if you're out there listening to me, please say hello in the chat. Tell us your name. Tell us where you are in the world and tell us what you're up to with teaching English as a foreign language. Have you just finished the course? Are you doing the course at the moment? Are you looking for a job? Um, are you thinking about going abroad? Because some people are thinking about going abroad at the moment. Just let us know. We'd be really interested. I can see some hellos coming in now. Hi, Susan. Hi, John. Yes, fantastic. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, if you've seen these before, you're probably bored of me telling you about myself. But, you know, who doesn't like talking about themselves? Um, my name is Carl. I live in Belfast, well, just outside Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm originally from London and I do the practical weekend courses in Northern Ireland over here. So if you're looking to become a TEFL teacher in Northern Ireland and you do the weekend course, you will have the um, pleasure maybe of spending a weekend with me um, and I would teach you how to become a TEFL teacher based on the learning you've already done on the online course. So let's just say hello, few hellos. Hi, Susan. Hi, John. Orsolia. Did I say that right? Orsi. Thank you for shortening that for me. From Hungary. Uh, Sarah in Lincoln. Hello, Sarah. Susan in Essex. Anna. Um, good. Kevin. Hi. Bellen. Sharon. Lizzie. Hi. And Frankie Teffel. You've even changed your name to have Teffel in it. That's how much you love it. Um, good. Thank you, everyone. Any questions at all about what I'm talking about or anything else, please put them in the chat and I will try my best to answer them. OK, good. So transferring from classroom courses to online is something that I, I did myself. So um, for many years, I worked abroad as a TEFL teacher. I worked in uh, China, Sri Lanka, Vietnam. I was in Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Iraq. Um, I also taught in the UK, did a few different roles in the UK, um, taught in South Africa for a bit. So I, I, I was a classroom teacher until about sort of four or five years ago when I tried to, well, I, I did, I set myself up as an online teacher. So first thing that I need to tell you is that the theory doesn't change. OK, so if you're if you've been teaching in a classroom for a while or if you've done an online course and you're sort of ready to be teaching, the theory that you've learned on those courses is completely transferable to working online. OK, so everything that you have that you know about teaching skills, for example, writing, reading, listening or speaking, the way that you would teach them is in terms of the activities and in terms of the lesson plans is is almost completely the same okay um and if you're teaching grammar you go from a lead-in through to some sort of presentation of the grammar through to um uh, uh, the different various practice levels from control practice through to freer practice that again is similar you just use different tools in the way you deliver it to you. So theory is the same. OK, that's the first thing that I need to say. So don't if you're a classroom teacher like I was and you think, oh, no, I've got to change massively the, the way I teach that. That's just not true, really. Of course, you know, you're not in a room with your students. 
of course they're not there right in front of you you can get in and get a pen and mark their work that kind of thing you're probably gonna have smaller groups that kind of thing you, you just have different tools as john has very helpfully i've just pinched that for me john as, as put in the chat okay so you just use the tools differently instead of using worksheets you might use a google shared doc and i'm going to go into that in a bit more in a second i can see a couple of questions coming in so i'm just going to stop there actually i'm just gonna say hello venus from pakistan you might win that you might have taken the uh award for being the furthest away hello venus um please suggest a suitable tefl course okay um venus right basically you're looking for a tefl if you're looking for an online course you're looking for a course that's 120 hours minimum 100 yeah is it 105 or 120 hours, Alan? I can't remember. I think it's 120 hours. I've had a brain freeze on Friday. 120 hour TEFL course. But the key thing is to look for accredited courses. Uh, accredited means they are checked by some sort of industry body and that, that which are separate from the providers of your course. So they will go, that accreditation body will go and watch people like me and will make sure that I'm teaching you correctly. And they will also go onto the web pages and they will check that all the feedback you're getting is correct. They will also check that the videos that you are watching and the activities you're doing are good TEFL um, related, good TEFL quality learning materials. And if that course comes up to standard, then they get an accreditation stamp, TEFL.org they we have accredited courses from separate bodies than ours now why is the separate bodies thing important because you can have i could start a tefl course and i could also start up my own accreditation body my accreditation body does my own tefl course you've got to make sure that you check whether they are separate from the provider i hope that makes sense and then just Look at the sort of tutors that are on the courses. Do they have master's level qualifications? Do they have they been teaching for a while? That kind of thing. And let that help you. Hope that answers your question. Um, Venus. Good. John. Hello. Uh, OK. Do you need to complete the teaching module before the weekend class? Uh, no, you do not need to complete the teaching module before the weekend class class um very often i have um uh people in my groups in in northern ireland who have um who are halfway through the course some have only just started some have finished the course you don't need to have finished the online course before you come and do the weekend class with somebody like me okay they 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 they, re they relate to each other you know the, the subjects are similar they, the course so just just um yeah you don't need to have one before the other okay hi bridget in zimbabwe or oh, i don't know was that is that further than um pakistan no i think probably oh i, don't, I think i think zimbabwe might be further i have no idea hello nick in naples hello tish in germany i'm just looking for any questions good lorna that's a good point you've made there um if you are looking to do the weekend courses at the moment they're not really working they're not they're not working I, i'm not doing them so there is um ways around that um through doing uh the sessions live through zoom i think that is the way that tefl org is using it with alex she's fantastic and then um just you can do it like that okay great right so so you if you're now looking to go online um first thing is you've you basically got to find some students okay so it sounds simple you know i need some students but that that's just the way it is okay so what you need to do is either go and work for a recruiter or set yourself up online and find your own students that way now if you do have a lot of classroom teaching experience um you're probably in a position where you're probably a bit more confident to set yourself up online yourself why because you have first of all materials if you've been teaching one or two years you probably well you definitely have used some sort of materials in your classroom so you've got an idea of maybe textbooks you've got an idea of maybe you've made your own materials or you found your own ones on the internet so you can use that knowledge that you've got through to uh, on an online platform 
OK, so you can use your experience like that. And then once you're thinking, OK, I can and you kind of might know what type of teacher you want to be. Do you want to be an online teacher for kids? Do you want to be an online teacher for exams? Do you want to be an online teacher for business? That kind of thing. So um, you can advertise yourself as Carl, the business English teacher, Carl, the presentation English teacher, Carl, the um, Trinity reading teacher whatever it is that you you want to sort of specialize yourself in because you've taught that before you've got an idea you'll just be up and running a bit more quickly for that kind of thing so then you you, you would build your own website hopefully using various different you could either build one up through wordpress or through uh, wix something like that and you try and find your students through advertising on facebook through Google ads, through getting involved in discussions on social media, Twitter, that kind of thing, and see um, what you can find like that. OK, so that's an advantage of being a classroom teacher before moving online is the fact that you have got that kind of experience. All right. OK, I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to stop there because I can see a question. Um, any questions, please type them in about anything at all to do with TEFL. Hello, Anne. I was told I need classroom TEFL in order to work abroad as they don't accept online courses. OK, right. And first of all, um, I just want to just want to see when you say TEFL in order to work abroad. OK, um, that's not a blanket rule at all. You know, it, it's. Just because you haven't been in a classroom with someone that doesn't mean that the whole world won't accept you. One school might decide they won't accept you because they want you to have uh, some sort of classroom experience. OK, so that is definitely not a blanket rule at all. And I don't know who told you that. If you are looking to go work abroad or even to go work in an online job, if you have weekend course experience, of course, that sets you a bit apart from the other people. And that might mean that you have a better chance of getting a job. OK, right. So let's just go back to the classroom to online. So um, so you a classroom teacher, you've got a whole load of experience. So you might set yourself up, as I said, to get students your own way through um building up a website finding your own students teaching them online and i'm going to get to the actual teaching in a bit the other way obviously is to go and work for someone if you go and work for someone um if you have got a, t a bit of experience obviously you're going to have to completely adapt the way that you teach to probably their materials their students that they've got um you're going to have to probably adapt to um the working hours that they do OK, so that's just something to bear in mind when you go and work for an online company is that you, you sort of have less freedom in how you're going to teach. Whereas if you set yourself up to be an individual trying to get your own students, that kind of thing, then you um, would, you, you know, you, you have a bit more freedom in the times you work and the students you get, that kind of thing. OK, good. Right. So you've decided that you want to go online. What do you do? What do you need? Right. First of all, obviously, you need a computer. And that might sound crazy, but I do know of teachers that are trying to teach online with one of these. OK, they think that, OK, I'm going to be an online teacher and I'm going to do it through Skype on my mobile phone. I, I really don't think it works. OK. I, Please, if you've got experience of teaching through a mobile phone, please put it in there. But I don't know. I just don't know how it can happen. You need some sort of laptop. Uh, you need some sort of desktop computer. Um, you probably will end up needing some sort of microphone. Sorry if that made a noise on you. You're probably going to definitely need some sort of headphones at some point. Um, you're definitely going to need a webcam, all that kind of thing. Do you so hardware? Yes, you do need a certain level of hardware. That that is true. Okay, but a question I get asked a lot is, what special software do I use? Okay, and the the truth is, I don't. Well, I didn't when I started for the first few years pay for any special software. I started by using Skype and um, shared Microsoft Word documents. So, yes, if you haven't got Microsoft Office, you would need to maybe buy, buy that or you can use the web based one, I think. But 
you you would do skype like this and you say hello and you play you if you're doing listening you um uh you would need um sorry you, you'd play skype through the through the uh the uh you play the sound through the skype that kind of thing if you're doing a listening lesson you would um if you're doing speaking obviously you could hear them that kind of thing if you're doing some sort of worksheet you can copy and paste it into the shared doc the person at the other end can see it they can type into it if you're doing writing and they can type the answers into it if you're doing grammar that kind of thing if you've got two students you can do a group call with skype something like that okay so that's how i started then i moved on to a zoom okay so why did i move on to zoom i felt that the um the the functionality within zoom was better than within skype i felt that there was a better way to um uh, to put people in breakout rooms you could record them that kind of thing i felt that that was um much much better okay so i think that um you move then on to zoom you don't need to buy any sort of special software at all okay um a couple of people are saying well one person said they're a poor signal is it a poor signal can you hear me um okay good i'm glad people are saying that it is good please any questions about anything i'm saying please go for it um so don't go out and buy any special kind of software to go and teach online and if you're going to go work for a company you'll probably use your their web-based software or they will tell you what program to use if they're getting you to buy some sort of special software i'd be a little bit wary i'd I'd like why would you need to have that okay it is worth buying yourself some good headphones it's worth buying yourself a good thank you a a really good microphone well not a really really good microphone but make sure you have a microphone that's not the built-in microphone on your laptop make sure you've got one that's connected to your headphones and um please make sure you, that your webcam works fine, okay? So don't go out and buy any special software. Um, and then and then just go from that. Your students in front of you, you just have your same sort of lesson plan, but instead of being like, okay, there I would have handed out a worksheet. No, there I'm going to share a document with the students or I'm going to type into a document. Okay, thank you. It uh, doesn't seem to be any poor signals, Lisa. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if, what the connection problem is there. Okay, uh, good, John. I'm glad you um, agree with me. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, when you open a free account with Zoom, did you have to give payment details? No, I don't. I don't think you have to give it for the free account. The limitations to the free account and why I eventually moved away from the free account is the um, length of time that you can have. Um, connected with a with a student if you if it's a if it's a free account i think you can only go up to maybe 50 minutes i mean it's different at the moment because the pandemic they have changed the rules i think but if you pay for it then you can do longer ones and sometimes you do have sort of maybe more specialist lessons where you might do longer sort of two hours but i wouldn't really keep beyond that okay good so john uh don't give you payment details don't pay for zoom first of all Okay, good. Uh, Susan, hello. How difficult is it to teach when a student only has a mobile phone? Refugees often don't have a laptop. Very good question. Okay, so I have taught students that don't have um, a laptop. Right. The 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 problem is for speaking lessons and probably for listening lessons. It's not too difficult. Why? Because obviously, for a listening, you can get them involved um, through the Skype chat or the Zoom chat on your mobile, on using your computer, them using their mobile phone, okay? The problem then comes with, okay, I've now, if you're sending, saying to students, right, I've now sent you a picture I'd like you to talk about, or I've now put a discussion question up on the screen, something like that, or, you know, you're giving out some sort of worksheet. Very often the students have to stop Zoom or Skype and, you know, switch in their mobile phone to a different kind of um, application on their mobile phone, which, and, you know, obviously 
you know, not all of them have Microsoft on their phone, Microsoft Word, that kind of thing. So you might find that you're ending, you're trying to use the chat function um, within the Zoom call or the Skype call a bit more. OK, so once you've once you've sort of got beyond that and you've sort of got yourself into a routine of how the student students can use it, then that works. The problem with refugees and I have taught refugees is their level of tech competence and the level of English is generally quite low. So you do need to give yourself some learner training. Um, you've got to sort of simply try and explain to them how to find different things on their mobile phone. And you yourself have to have a lot of patience when you switch um, apps. You kind of sometimes lose them, you don't get to see them, that kind of thing. So you're right. It is quite interesting. OK, it's, it's quite difficult training and just keep patience, patience, patience. OK, good. Uh, Anne, hello. When you teach ESOL classes, do you have to teach them the alphabet? How do you teach the writing aspect? So for anybody that doesn't know, ESOL is English as a second or other language. Um, it's what we call teaching people in the UK who need to learn English. That's that's English as a foreign language is when you go abroad or you're teaching students that are abroad English. ESOL is people that have moved to the UK or to America or to Australia, an English speaking country, and they need to learn English. Very often they have quite low levels of English in my experience of teaching these ESOL classes. So if you have a beginner class, yes, you do need to teach them the alphabet and it starts with how you teach kids. Okay, everybody, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you, you know, just get them to repeat that kind of thing. You put the letters up on the screen and you say, okay, A, you point at them, please repeat. And you might put them in a group. And you get them to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, O, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And you keep going wrong. If someone gets it wrong, you go back to the start, that kind of thing. Good. How do you teach the writing aspect of learning an alphabet? You, um, lots of copying. You have them up on the screen. You have the letters up on a screen or on a worksheet, or you write on the whiteboard and you ask, okay, guys, copy this. Okay, guys, copy this. If you are, um, trying to teach them online the a the alphabet that kind of thing then very simply you could type it into you can um, type it into word and you can get special handwriting fonts in microsoft word you get them on a piece of paper to show you and you'd say okay great thanks guys that kind of thing um they you know they do the b's like that you say okay guys thank you very much uh i've not got done that very well there we go there's your b's and then you just you just go through that and then you're checking them, you're checking them, you're checking them, you get them to take photos of it or that kind of thing to make sure it's OK. Thank you. And I hope that's answered your question. Lizzie, hello. What would you say is a good length of time for an online lesson before students start to get bored and tune out? Uh, very good question. Um, I would say, especially if they're quite low ish levels, I would say sort of 50 minutes tends to be the longest that I do with them. If you're going to be teaching maybe higher levels. And they might be able to have an activity that gives you a little bit of time off. They do some reading or something like that, which sort of 10 minutes, then that, you know, they can maybe go for a little bit longer. But I would say 50 minutes tends to be the um, the, the limit. Also, if you're going to go longer than that, then make sure you have breaks in it. OK, definitely that helps. OK, good. Uh, any more questions, please type them in. Right. So. Um, your first lesson with a student is if they're new to you, very often I tend to give the first lesson to students at a discount or like a pound for the first 20 minutes or half an hour, something like that. Sometimes I've even, if times are a bit tough, I give it to them for free. Um, and I, from that first lesson, you kind of want to know a little bit more about what they want from you, why they're learning the lesson, why they're learning English, why they're learning this particular type of English you want to help them. And then from that, you sort of need to um, get their needs and you would maybe plan out the syllabus, that kind of thing. All of this is similar to what you would do if you were in a classroom. OK, you would look at your students and you think, OK, I need this. You would look at students and you think, OK, I need to do um, error correction about this. They need to have this sort of accuracy. They need to have this sort of vocabulary. Basically, there's not much 
difference in terms of how the theory works in terms of needs analysis syllabuses that kind of thing okay so and then from that you go through the lessons you prepare your materials you select your materials and that's why as i spoke a bit about the niche last week making sure that when you're finding students online you have a particular type of english that you want to learn so you want to teach why because if you want to teach all types of english you're going to need business english materials you're going to need exam materials you're going to need kids different age ranges of kids you're going to need different levels of english within business english within academic english or whatever it is you might be within the exams so um having a niche allows you to prepare a certain number of lessons that you can keep repeating okay this key because you don't want to spend too long creating materials some people it comes very naturally to some people it doesn't come so natural to so think of a niche get that niche as narrow as you can you're going to be carl that teaches uh email english whatever it might be you're going to be carl that teaches uh the ielts test listening english then that way you've got lots of lessons to build on. You can get the lessons quite quickly and that will help you. OK, a um, couple of questions there. Uh, hello, Anne. I wanted to. Hello, Anne, again. I wanted to work abroad after completing my TEFL, but they want two years work experience. Who is who is they? Anne? I'm not. Let me know who um, th they are. OK, I, you know, is it a specific school saying that you, they need two work years work experience or is it a a whole country saying that you need to need to have this give me a bit more experience on those give me a bit more explanation about those pronouns if you have no experience you can go if you're in the uk a good way of teaching is through volunteering with refugees that's a way of getting experience or through teaching online a refugee net i think it is they can also teach but and give me some more information while you're still there who is the they that you're talking about because i've never known a whole a country which country is telling you you need two ex two years experience I, you know I, i'm not so sure um okay gonna gonna get back to you in a bit okay um tish hello what is a good resource for writing developing lesson plans i'm beginning my tef 120 hour um do you mean resource as in to find lessons or to find texts that kind of things i mean if you're looking for a website that will help you find text that you could then use within your lessons, BBC is pretty good. Um, you can, um, BBC is pretty good for that. BBC.co.uk is pretty good or .com, that kind of thing. There's One Stop English, which is pretty good um, for whole lessons. You might need to pay for some of them. The most recent ones are free, but the archive ones are, you have to pay for them. Um, just type in whatever the lesson is that you're trying to teach. Type that into Google and you will find resources and you will find lessons. OK, um, and you're saying I hope that answers your question, Tish. Um, uh, and you're saying Japan, the whole of Japan is telling you that you have to have two years experience. Well, and I went and worked in Japan when I didn't have two years experience. There might be recruiters that are telling you that you that they'll only take people on with two years. Fine. You can't do anything about that. OK, but keep looking around. Keep don't have your heart set on a certain place. So, for example, if you want to go and work in Japan, in Tokyo, then maybe stop boring yourself out japan's a big big country look to osaka look to hokkaido lots of different places you know th there will be recruiters that are saying yes we will only take people on with two years that is true recruiters do say that but just broaden out okay so right forget that one go look for other people some schools yes but not all schools some schools will do that if you want to get out to japan soon no keep looking keep looking keep looking good um Tish, sample lesson plans, perhaps books or websites. Uh, yeah, OK. So, I mean, right. So if on your course you're looking for uh, you've got to teach, I don't know, a intermediate reading skimming lesson, that kind of thing. I'm sure if you type that into Google, other search providers are available, then you can find that. Right. Books are slightly different because um copyright basically so it's, it is quite difficult to find books online legally okay 
websites, look at the British Council website, look at One Stop English, look at um, BBC Learning English. Did I just say that? I can't remember. Um, look into those. I'm sure that will help you. OK, good. Uh, John. Yeah, exactly. About Japan. I, You know, it's not true that they need to have two years. Hello, Sashikala. Sashikala, hello. Are there any resources which can be used as a guide? Um, yeah. So as I just said, um, you know, look at those websites that I just talked about. Also, um, there is a TEFL org Facebook group with lots of people in it who are so this is different from the page you're watching me on now. This is a private group, which you have to ask for membership of it, but it's open to anybody. And in that group, there's lots of people asking questions and there's lots of um, people commenting. They can help you, that kind of thing. Have a look on there. But One Stop English, British Council Learn English, uh, BBC Learn English are probably my three go to. OK. Um, hello, Lisa. Uh, I want to reach out to Spanish speaking students. You speak Spanish. Very good. Um, I would like to focus on this area. What would be the best way to do that? Very. That's a good way. Didn't. Right. So how do you find Spanish students? Right. Um, so if you're talking about teaching Spanish students online. OK. I. Right. There's a couple of things you've got to be aware of. There are a lot, a lot of language schools in Spain. Wherever you go to any town i go to Sp i work in spain a lot pre-lockdown and you know every town you go to they have a lot of language schools so they are you know even quite small towns generally have to have an english don't have to sorry that have to is wrong they they generally have an english idioma school in that kind of thing so it's it's difficult to get spanish students online not impossible but difficult uh, because they can just go to the local school that's 100 yards that way or half a mile that way or 10 minute drive. OK, so they don't there's not much call for online learning in Spain. However, I have had Spanish students contact me. Um, I have found that specialized Facebook adverts where you really much target people in Spain through the settings um, go down that route. Advertise yourself as being good spanish speaker so that would definitely maybe help you with the lower levels um i mean it'll help you with all levels but um just you know if you can speak a language it generally helps to get the lower levels through it quicker more quickly okay so i you've got to target your advertising there okay good um vera hello I believe you missed my question. Not so far up. Sorry, Vera. Vera, where's your question? Let me go back up and find your question. Hi. Oh, sorry, I did. Hello. Um, that's terrible of me. Uh, hi, Carl. I'm from the UK and reside in Germany. Very nice. Um, I have a question concerning specialization and finding my niche. How do I specialize in a specific area? Does TEFL or offer additional courses in them or does this require self-study? So uh, do you mean does TEFL offer an additional course in how to find your niche? I don't think that is a specific module. Alan, correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's not. Right, Vera, how do you find your niche? First of all, think of the students you want to um, work with. If you're in Germany, it's probably going to be quite high level students because everybody in Germany speaks fantastic English. So if you're going to go online, you know, you're, 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 you're going to have to think of a type of English where it's quite high level if you only want to get German speakers. Obviously, if you go online, you don't limit yourself to the people around you in the country you're in. You can reach further out. So think of um, the type of uh, high level things that people want to learn. So that tends to be things like quite high level business English. That could be sort of taking exams to quite a high level, that kind of thing. Think about that. If you're um, if you're happy to reach yourself out beyond Germany, think about the, the age range, first of all, that you want to teach. Do you want to teach adults or kids? Fine. You want to teach kids. OK. Do you want to teach little kids five to eight or even younger than that? Do you want to teach 10 to 12 or do you want to teach teenagers? Think about the age ranges and sort of go down that. If you want to teach adults, what kind of interests you? What won't you get bored of teaching all the time? I like teaching exam preparation courses, so I teach a lot of that. You might like teaching. You might be really into teaching and reading. There are people out there like that. 
get yourself down that think about yourself and then think about how you can add benefit to them vera did that answer your question i'm sorry for um if that's not what you're on about please if vera type in your question again if i didn't get that right uh lisa maybe south america is that an is that an uh so you're still talking about the spanish students right um yeah okay right the problem with south america is um for finding students is uh they the students don't tend to have lots of money so if you're in the uk and you're looking to get um let's say 20 quid an hour because you know that's probably about how much you're looking for what parts of south america can afford to pay you individually 20 quid an hour you know, you've got to be a little bit sort of realistic in talk, in sort of how, you know, if you now if you're happy to earn sort of 10 quid an hour. Yeah, maybe go after the South Americans a bit again, targeted advertising, Facebook, Google, that kind of thing. Speaking Spanish will definitely help you with the lower levels, as I said. But you do have to be aware of the amount of if you're going after students yourself, you do have to be aware of what the. um how much they're willing to pay versus how much you're willing to accept lisa i hope that answers your question you put a thanks in there so i'm guessing i'll take that okay so what right, what just to sort of summer to sort of summarize sum up just a final thought if you are a classroom teacher and you're looking to go online don't think of it as things that are wildly different i myself teach online and i also in normal life um, I teach online and I also teach in classrooms. I don't think it's an either or thing. I think the two complement each other. I think that you have similar knowledge about all of them. And, you know, it, no, you don't. All these textbooks that I've got here on my teaching English textbooks, I don't rip them all up and think, oh, no, that's not going to work in teaching online because that's not true. OK, the theory is exactly the same okay that's what i go for a couple of questions just to finish off i think lauren you give me a really long one it's gonna take me ages to read it, i think uh teach english online to spanish students situated in spain um the class would be for large range of lower students lower i'm home to low spanish students. right okay so you've got loads of things there um right i right if you're gonna go teach english online i would be very honestly i'd be very wary about trying to get just teach to all ages and all levels okay um you're gonna it's it's you're gonna have to advertise a lot to a wide range of people it's gonna eat up your budget a lot whereas if you teach quite a narrow focus that allows you to get students lauren if you're going to be in spain uh you're yourself are going to be in spain and you're going to teach english online to spanish students um i, I my first point would be maybe why I, I i would think that you know covid out the window forget about covid um there's a lot of opportunity to find local people around you that would be willing to learn english okay also the other thing is if you are an english native speaker your lack of spanish won't be a problem at all because actually rightly or wrongly my opinion wrongly um students want to have a native english speaking teacher they don't want to sit there listening to an english person speaking in spanish if that makes sense if you're going to teach lower levels that's slightly different because sometimes they do need a bit of spanish to get them through but i wouldn't worry too much about that okay unless there's any more questions i'm going to wrap it all up there um thank you for listening everybody i hope you have enjoyed that i hope i've given you some insight into how to set yourself up from being a classroom teacher just don't don't think of them as um very different from each other just think um uh that they they, they complement each other what you've taken everything just um just go from that uh about the refugee yes and i will talk to you um i will try and find in the chat a, a link to refugee net i think it is but i will check that and i'll put it into the chat okay um you've been offered a job to teach english online that that's that's fine lauren that's good D go for it don't worry about your lack of spanish okay thank you everybody i hope you enjoyed it um i might see you next week who knows um thank you any questions or if you've got any topics that you want us to cover in this please let us know if there's anything specific you want to know 
you know, um, anything at all, happy to go along with that. Okay. Cheers, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.